Hello, everyone, and welcome to Records Management 101. My name is Ethan Anderson. I am the Government Records Archivist for the Kansas Historical Society, and I will be leading you through this presentation today. Now, as the Government Records Archivist, I help agencies create and update retention schedules, transfer records to the state archives, I process incoming collections, and I also train state and local agency officials on subjects like records management. This presentation today is designed to give you all the basic information you will need to successfully manage records at your office, whether you work for a state agency or a county level agency here in Kansas. We realize very few people have a background in records management, so we're going to start today with a few key records terms you'll need to know. We'll also show you where to find your retention schedules on the Kansas Historical Society website, and we'll go over some state records laws as well as some boards and committees you'll need to be familiar with in order to create or update your agency's retention schedules. So to make sure we're all on the same playing field, let's start with some key terms. The first is series, which is simply a group of similar records. We try to make each series fairly broad, so we like to steer away from things such as names or numbers of particular forms. That way, if those forms change, perhaps on a regular basis, we don't have to go back and update the series each time. The second term is schedule, which can be a little tricky just because it's both a verb and a noun. As a verb, schedule means figuring out what records you have, how long you should keep them for, and what you should ultimately do with those records. As a noun, schedule is fairly synonymous with series. It's going to be a document which tells you everything you need to know about those records, how long they should be kept, whether any restrictions apply to them, and so forth. Our third term is disposition, which is what you ultimately do with those records. The state of Kansas recognizes three different dispositions. There is permanent, which means those records are retained permanently by your office, either on-site or in off-site storage. There is archives, which means those records are transferred to us out at the state archives. And there is destroy, which should be fairly straightforward. We generally advise agencies that if there is any chance of your records containing personally identifiable information, classified information, or restricted information, that you destroy those records either by burning or by shredding. If there is no chance that those records contain any of that information, you are free to destroy them simply by recycling. And our last key term is retention, which refers to how long you have to keep certain records. Now, retention can vary quite a bit. On our website, you'll see anywhere from retain until no longer useful or retain until business is completed to one of our longest retention periods, uh, which is under employee personnel files and has a retention length of about 43 years for non-contract employees. You may at some point come across the phrase life cycle of records, which can sound a little confusing or intimidating, but it's really quite simple. Either you create a, a record or receive it from another individual or another agency, you use it for a certain period of time, for example, until a particular project or a grant is over, and then when you no longer need that record or you no longer refer to it on a regular basis, it hits its disposition. And that is when those records are again kept by your agency permanently, either on-site or off-site, they're transferred to us at the state archives, or they're destroyed. Now, I know archivists have a reputation as hoarders, and while that was certainly the case with a few of my colleagues, uh, I am definitely not. I will be the first one to tell you that if a record has hit its retention period and the disposition says that it can be destroyed, uh, go ahead and destroy that record. It's going to make your life easier in the long run. It's really only about 3 to 5% of records that are created by state agencies that are deemed to have enough uh, historical, legal, or administrative value to ultimately come out to us at the state archives. Now, how do you know whether a record can be destroyed, transferred to us at the state archives, or kept permanently by your agency? Well, all of that information can be found on our website, kshs.org. Now, in the middle of the blue bar at the top of the screen, you will see public records listed. If you hover your cursor over that, in the second column from the left, you will see records retention schedules. Click on search under that and it will bring you to this page. Now, if you are a state agency, your records will be under the top here under two separate pages. The first is the state general schedule, which includes all the retention schedules that every state agency in Kansas should be producing. So this is where you'll find things like employee personnel files, annual and special reports, meeting minutes, board packets, things like that. So let's go down to committee files, for instance. 
Now, every series on our website will include a series ID, which is a number generated by our database, as well as a title, a description, if that title does not contain enough information, a clear retention period and disposition. It will list any restrictions which may pertain to those records, and it will have the date it was approved by the State Records Board, which is the governing body for records management in the state of Kansas. You will also see a KAR number. Now, a lot of people get uh, hung up on these KAR numbers, uh, but this one is not that important. It is not a true KAR number. It rather refers back to the State Records Board meeting when that series was passed. Now, if a series is slightly more complicated, like policy-related correspondence, for instance, you will notice C comments listed under both the retention and disposition. And all of this information will still be found in the retention schedule. It will just be listed under the comment section. So here you can see that these records must be retained until the individual leaves their position. It's not a clear, you know, five five fiscal years or three calendar years or anything like that. And then depending on the agency's IT capabilities, uh, those records can either be retained permanently by the agency or transferred to the state archives. Now that was the state general schedule. And again, all state agencies will have a second group of retention schedules to follow based strictly on records created by their agency. So if we go back to the main search page and click on browse retention schedules, we will come to this page here. And let's go to Board of Mortuary Arts, for example. Here you will see all the retention schedules that are unique to that particular agency. So obviously not all state agencies produce embalmers cards or embalmers license application files, which is why those records are here on that agency's page. Now all of these retention schedules will have the same information as the ones on the state general schedule. There will again be a title, a description, a clear retention and disposition listed, as well as any restrictions. Now, if you work for a county level agency, you will also have both a general schedule and an agency specific schedule. Those can be found at the bottom of the main search page where it says local slash county. Simply click on the drop down bar to the right of agency name and you will see the general schedule as well as schedules for each office. Simply click on search and your agency page will pop up. All right, now that we've gone over some basic terms and where you can find your retention schedules, let's dig a little deeper into records management in the state of Kansas. I know I said we were done with definitions, but we do have one more to go over, and that is what exactly is a government record? Quite simply, it's everything that you use on a day-to-day -day basis to complete your job. The important point here is that the format doesn't matter. Anything is considered a government record, whether it's on paper, microfilm, microfiche, an electronic recording, a cassette tape, a VHS tape, an email message, or a Word document. All of those are considered a record. At the Kansas Historical Society, we also often say that the state of Kansas is format agnostic. This means that the state doesn't care whether you keep something in paper or electronic format just so long as you are keeping that record. So if your agency is in the process of digitizing its records, the state fully supports that. Uh, just be sure you are doing quality assurance to ensure that the digital copy perfectly matches the original paper copy. Once that is complete, the paper copy can then be destroyed. The reason we're able to tell you these things is that we have a handy statute to back us up. So KSA 45-402 says that everything you use on a daily basis, whether it be volumes, documents, reports, maps, etc., uh, it's all a government record. The important part here is in the fifth line where it says, regardless of physical form or characteristics, again, everything is a government record. So why is records management important? Why should you care and why should you continue to listen to this presentation? Well, first and foremost, good records management is essential to a functioning democracy. In order for our system of government to work, we have to be able to hold our elected leaders accountable, and we are able to do that through things like transparency and answering core requests. Second, a lot of these records are important. If something is to be kept permanently or in the archives, we shouldn't be worrying about them in the short term and then, you know, kicking the can down the road for someone else to deal with after a few years. We want to ensure that these records are well taken care of and that as long as there is a state of Kansas, these records can be accessed. 
Another part of protecting these records is security. No matter what agency you work for, chances are that you have records with social security numbers, personally identifiable information, or personal financial information. At the State Archives, we also have things like adoption records and mental health files, and we obviously can't be giving these records out to anyone who walks in the door. We need to protect that sensitive information. We also want to be as cost effective as we can when retaining these records. It's a really bad idea to keep everything forever. Not only will the price of storing these records physically or electronically increase substantially, but if you get a core request for records which say you were only supposed to be keeping for three years and you have all of those records going back 50 years, you have to turn over all 50 years of those records to comply with that request. So it's going to take you a lot more time and a lot more effort to answer that core request. That's why we recommend that you follow your retention schedules as closely as possible. Again, if your schedule says to keep something for three years and you have those records for 50 years, get rid of those other 47 years. It's really going to be in your best interest to do so. Likewise, if you only have to keep those records for three years and you have them for 50 and the retention schedule says to transfer them to the archives, go ahead and send them to me. Make them be my responsibility and my problem. And then lastly, good records management is going to ensure that you are in full compliance with all records laws. If you get a core request, you don't have to sweat it because you are doing everything by law that you are supposed to be doing. When it comes to records statutes, there are four big ones dealing with records management in the state of Kansas. Now, I'm not going to go too in-depth on these. Uh, the first two, the Government Records Preservation Act and the Public Records Act, are the oldest. They cover things like the definition of a record and define the roles of the state records board, the state archivist, and things like that. The Kansas Open Records Act lists categories of records which are exempt from disclosure, such as records containing personally identifiable information or blueprints or drawings showing security features in government buildings. And last but not least is tampering with a public record. Uh, know that purposely destroying a public record is a Class A misdemeanor and is punishable by up to a year in jail and a $2,500 fine, uh, so just don't do it. Don't destroy or delete any records unless you can point to a retention schedule which gives you the authority to do so. If that is the only thing you take away from this presentation, I'm okay with that. Again, don't delete or destroy records until you can point to a retention schedule which gives you the authority to do so. You may be the one creating or using those records, but they are not your personal records. They belong to your agency, the government of Kansas, and by extension, the people of Kansas. Now what is my particular role in records management, and where do I and the rest of the Kansas Historical Society's Public Records Division fit into the grand scheme of things? Well, basically, we are somewhat glorified middlemen. We are the liaisons for all state and county level agencies and the State Records Board, which, as I said earlier, is the governing body for records management in the state of Kansas. Now, I want to point out that if you look at this slide, all of the arrows here point up, and there's a good reason for that. Records management in the state of Kansas is not a top-down, authoritarian organization. I'm not going to be dictating policy to you, and neither is the state records board. We are not records police. Rather, it is up to your agency, agency to create retention schedules which best fit your needs and then bring them before us and the state records board and get them approved. To better illustrate how records management works in the state of Kansas, I like to show a few photos. Now this first photo is of the Kansas Historical Society staff back in 1988. And out of everyone in this photo, roughly one-fourth of them dealt with public records in one way or another. So we had a pretty hands-on approach back then. Uh, we could meet with a lot of agencies one-on-one, -on -one, go through your file cabinets, give you advice on how you were storing and managing records, and just be a lot more involved in the process. Nowadays, this is what your public records staff looks like. There's really only two of us, Megan Burton, who is our Senior Archivist for Public Services, which means she oversees the public records staff in addition to overseeing our research room. And besides that, it's basically me. So again, I like to bring this up to help illustrate why we're here and why we're having this presentation. The way we do things has changed dramatically in the last 30 years. Before, we could be very hands-on with your agencies, uh, but now we simply just don't have the staff to do that. 
That's why we have trainings like this uh, to give you the tools you need to properly manage your agency's records. I know it's a constant struggle, uh, but if you have any questions or you need anything from us, please reach out. Uh, we are busy people. We provide records management guidance to over 100 state agencies, as well as to all county level agencies in all 105 counties. But that doesn't mean that we are ever too busy for you. So again, if you ever have questions about this presentation or you need help with anything, please email me. So earlier I mentioned the State Records Board, and I want to give you a little more information about the board in case you ever need to present any retention schedules before them. So the State Records Board is comprised of five members. There's a representative from the Attorney General's Office, the Department of Administration, the State Library, the State Archivist, as well as the Kansas Historical Society's Executive Director. So the State Records Board, or the SRB, meets quarterly starting in January. So they have meetings the third Thursday of January, April, July, and October. Again, they're here to provide guidance for you and your agency. Their job is to ensure that all retention schedules you are creating uh, or any big changes you plan on making to your current schedules make sense from a legal standpoint, an administrative standpoint, and a historical standpoint. This slide is just a fancy way of saying if you have any retention schedules to present before the State Records Board, please give us some time to work with you. We generally ask that if you are making changes to 10 or more series, that you present those proposals to us about a month in advance. If it's a more minor change to one or two schedules, we can typically get those hammered out in a couple of weeks before the meeting. A week before the meeting occurs, we'll send out the agenda, and then, if we have all done our homework, the proposed revisions or new schedules should be approved. I'll then update our database and the website, typically within 24 hours, and you are then free to follow those new or updated retention schedules. Now there's one more group I want to mention, and that is the Electronic Records Committee, which is a subcommittee of the State Records Board. As you can see, the makeup of the two groups is very similar, but the ERC is a lot more tech heavy, and that's because, as the name implies, it focuses on electronic records. Like the State Records Board, the Electronic Records Committee meets quarterly. They meet one month prior to all State Records Board meetings, so their meetings are in March, June, September, and December. If you are a state agency and you are planning on keeping records electronically for 10 years or more, you will need to have an electronic record keeping plan approved by the Electronic Records Committee before bringing those series before the State Records Board. If you are a county level agency, you can breathe a sigh of relief as you are not required to present anything before the, before the ERC. You're still welcome to do so, but you don't have to. The electronic record keeping plan is pretty short. Uh, we don't want to be a barrier to good records management, and we realize that agencies simply wouldn't follow the procedures if there were too many perceived hurdles. So the ERP is only two pages long and asks big, important questions about how you are retaining your long-term electronic records. So it is going to ask you things like, how are your records being kept? Are they in a database or some vendor-supported system? Who has access to those records? Are those records encrypted? Where are your backups located? Do you have a disaster recovery plan in place? Things like that. As with the State Records Board, if you are presenting an electronic record keeping plan before the Electronic Records Committee, we generally ask that you give us about a month in advance to work with you on getting all the kinks worked out prior to presenting anything before the committee. All right, so if you want to create or update your agency's retention schedules, where should you start? The first step is really figuring out what your records are. What are they being used for? How long do you refer to them or need them? What format are they in? Are they in paper or are they kept electronically? It could be both and that is totally fine. Maybe your agency created those records in paper form up to 2010 and now they're kept ele electronically. No big deal. Keep in mind that if you work for a state agency and your records will be kept electronically for 10 or more years, again, you will need to first fill out an electronic record keeping plan. Also, we ask that you do some research. See what other agencies are doing. See what similar agencies in other states are doing. Chances are you're creating similar records with similar retention needs. There's no real need to reinvent the wheel. After you've done all your research, contact your agency's records officer and make sure they agree with your assessment. Then contact me and we can get things finalized before presenting the series to the State Records Board. 
Now, in case you're interested, there is only one form that we ask you to fill out in this process, and that is the aptly named creation slash revision request form. It's pretty basic. Besides your contact information, we ask you to give us a series title, description, retention period, restrictions, etc. So everything we ask you to fill out on this form is going to be a part of the actual retention schedule. Now, if you only need to do some very minor changes to an existing retention schedule, you only need to get approval for those changes from me or from Megan. We have the authority from the State Records Board to take care of those minor issues. So if a form is changed or something else needs to be updated in the description, you just need our approval. If your agency no longer creates or uses a record series, you only need to contact us and we can mark that series as obsolete. If you have a series on your agency page that is identical or very similar to one on the general schedule, again, contact us and we can take the series off your agency page. If you have more substantial changes, those will need to go before the State Records Board. So if you have a brand new series or you want to change the disposition from, say, permanent to destroy, or you want to change the retention period from 50 years to 3 years, those are all changes that will need to be approved by the State Records Board. While you're going through and updating these schedules, we also ask that you look for references to outdated technology. If one of your series is talking about keeping things on VHS tapes, for example, chances are that those records are kept electronically nowadays. We also ask that you look for outdated phrases. We like to steer clear of the phrase, retain until no longer useful. Uh, we like to use retention periods that are a little clearer and a little less subjective. We also like to steer away from the phrase transfer to the archives for purging. As you saw earlier, there are only two of us dealing with state records at the archives, so we simply don't have the time or resources to purge all materials that are sent to our agency. And then lastly, don't be afraid to reappraise your records during this process. If something is marked destroy, but you think that it has some long-term historical significance, let us know. We are more than willing to work with you on getting that changed. Just because a retention schedule says one thing does not mean that it needs to be that way forever. All right, so now that you are an expert at retention schedules, I want to give you a little quiz to ensure you are paying attention. So these three are all examples of retention schedules that at one point in time were on an agency's webpage. I want you to give them a quick scan and decide if there is anything weird or that doesn't make sense to you in each of them. So for this first example, OES data and control files, is there anything odd or confusing about this schedule? And I will give you about 10 seconds or so to look this over. Okay, so there are two things that I would tell you to change about this retention schedule. First, I personally have no idea what OES stands for. I assume it's something like Office of Employment Services, but I'm not sure. Uh, so this schedule definitely needs a description that clearly spells out uh, what that stands for. Second, there is absolutely no reason why there should ever be a question mark in a retention schedule. Uh, so you're supposed to retain these records for nine years, and then what? Can you destroy them? Should you send them to us at the archives? Should you hang on to them for another 90 years? There's no way of knowing, so theoretically, you have to hang on to these records forever. Uh, this is a very poor retention schedule, and I really have no idea how it ever got approved in the first place. Okay, here is our second example, gas pro ration summary. Is there anything odd or confusing about this schedule? And again, I'll give you a few seconds to look it over. So the retention period here is listed as CURT, which I assume means current. But that still doesn't make any sense. So how long are these summaries current? Are they current for 10 days or 50 years? Uh, you really have no way of knowing. Again, I have no idea how this was ever approved. Uh, apparently records management standards were a lot looser back in the 80s. All right, our last example is complaint files. Is there anything weird or confusing about this retention schedule? So 
So this one may have been a little bit trickier, but if you look closely, the comments and the disposition don't match up. One says to send these records to the archives, and the other says to destroy them. Uh, please, if you need to destroy something, don't get me involved. Just do it yourself and cut out the middleman. Uh, it'll make both of our lives easier. Aside from that, I would also change the retain until no longer useful language in the comments. But again, the main issue here is to always make sure that the retention, comments, and disposition all match up. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. I appreciate you taking the time to educate yourself on records management in the state of Kansas. And again, if you have any questions or concerns about anything related to records management, please get in touch with either me or with Megan. Thank you and have a great day.